battles to be fought. These are the men who would be king. He is St. Petersburg's son, Alexei Romanov, an Olympic champion enduring Russia's hardships. Alone with his mother, no father, this means more than a medal. champion. Canada's Elvis Stoiko, fighting fame, defending his crown, winning a battle by just being here. In France, art is everything. It's all about image, style, are two different worlds. Who is the real Philippe Candeloro? Only Todd Eldridge knows what it's like to disappear. The young champion. The fading star. Now he returns to the world stage away from the throne, one step away from the shadows. The men who would be king. The men who would be world champion. Santee, the silver, have two American men finish atop the podium at the World Championships. That could happen here this evening. The leader is American champion Todd Eldridge. Running third is fellow American Scott Davis. The question, Sandra, is can they stay there? It's possible. Let's talk about Scott first. He was just terrific in the short program yesterday, but he's been known to have trouble with his nerves, particularly in the long program. He also has to fend off reigning Olympic champion Ermanov. What about Todd? Well, for Todd, he's been primed all week long. He's had a clean season. He's skating incredibly, and I think he could win it. The problem for both Todd and Scott is the guy wedged between them, the defending world champion from Canada, Elvis Stoiko, who fought his way through an ankle injury to the number two spot after the short program, but this should be considerably tougher for him tonight. Well, the German doctor who examined Elvis after the short program said that clean performance was superhuman. That was two and a half minutes. Tonight, it's four and a half minutes, eight triples, a quad combination. That's how an injured Elvis intends to defend his title. Here are the standings entering the free skate. Todd Eldridge is our leader with Elvis Stoiko, Scott Davis, Alexei Armanov, and Philippe Candeloro all shooting for the top prize here at the World Championship. The final group skates off the ice. Here is the order in which they will skate. Armanov first, followed by Eldridge, Candeloro, Davis, and the defending champion, Elvis Stoiko. And here is Alexei Armanov, who at age 20, skated away from Lillehammer with the Olympic gold medal yes. one year ago. We have detailed the many problems Russian skaters encounter in their attempt to prepare themselves for competition. Limited practice time, poor ice surfaces, air temperatures indoors, colder than out. He hasn't traveled the road of other Olympic champions, Sandra. He remains relatively unknown and lives an obscure lifestyle. He was so young when he won the Olympics that he was way ahead of his game plan and he and his coach felt he had not yet reached his full potential. That's why he stayed amateur and that's why he's going to be around for a few more years. But he's not a consistent short program performer. He's better in the long. He did a beautiful performance at Europeans a few weeks ago. He wants that now.
Maggie's skating to Swan Lake, and oddly enough, he's chosen to take the role of the swan. It's a real shame because in practice wearing simple clothes, he looks so powerful with such clean lines, and I think this is not the best artistic choice for him. at the Europeans, he was only sixth after the short program, but then at the free skate, he was outstanding and fought his way to a silver medal. Unfortunately, this performance did not match the one he skated at Europeans. All these programs for the men are so high risk, so many triples, it's almost impossible to skate cleanly. is all pumped up. He likes to listen to rock and roll, but he skates to classical music, and at the Olympics, he skated all the way to a gold. I get the feeling you don't think that's going to happen here, Sandra. Well, it's hard to say until the other men skate. He did land six triples, but it was a slow performance and a somewhat flat performance. He's happy with it, though. To, con to control the landing. He's got his left side dropped and there's no way he can do anything more after that. But his second triple axel was a beauty. Textbook perfect. Very nice. Topped off with a double toe. But I think the winner here is going to need a triple-triple combination. The first set of marks for Alexei Armanov. Five, seven, five, not up six, to gold medal standard, five, are they? Seven, no, they're not. Five, five, There's definitely five, lots of room above. Marks for presentation. Five, seven, five, nine, the second five, set of marks seven, for Ermanov, and five, he may have a battle on his hands five, just to get nine, to the medal podium. Five, eight, 
Kamarov missed out on a medal a year ago. He may miss it again this year. Meanwhile, the leader coming into the free skate is American national champion Todd Eldridge. He is backstage, and he will skate next as we continue our coverage of the 1995 World Figure Skating Championships. The World Figure Skating Championships are brought to you. There is no other way to describe it, Sandra. In his short program, he had a spectacular outing. What a comeback. And he has had a great season. He's won every competition he's entered, beating every one of these men except Alvis. But he decided months ago back home in Detroit, he wants to win this event. It's time.
coverage. To have the presence of mind, the energy, the confidence to re-choreograph this program, throw in that triple axel, and land it. It was perfect. It was a beauty. This is incredible. Todd Eldridge's parents, John and Ruth, cheering him on. He landed eight triples. That's the maximum allowed. He opened with this triple axel. Nice height. A bit of a shaky landing there into the double from there he just gained strength every jump was stronger every move was stronger but then halfway through this happened obvious lean in the air couldn't handle it and from that moment on he must have been thinking and thinking where can i do it again four minutes and 30 seconds right at the end of the program look at that <laughs> gorgeous and while that was happening up in the stands, take a look at Mom Ruth, you betcha. To the floor. <laughs> she fell, he stood up. <laughs> Todd, you gotta make it easier on us. A few tears from Nicole Bovec. Todd's teammate, training partner. They train together every single day in Detroit. Here are the marks. What about them, Sandra? They've left room. They've left room for Elvis. They could still be good enough, but there is room. Marks for presentation. And now the second set of marks. Room again. Those have gone up, but there still is room again. Todd Eldridge remains in the lead, at least for now. But remember, still to take the ice tonight is the defending champion from Canada, Elvis Stoiko. And perhaps there is no one tougher than a champion trying to defend his turf. Meanwhile, Marianne is with Todd. Todd, what courage. After missing the second triple axel, you throw one in at the end of a four-and-a-half-minute program. I don't know what to say. <laughs> you know, I, I was just so determined. I felt great all week, and, uh, you know, I wasn't going to let one little fall on triple axel, you know, ruin it. I figured, what the heck, I have enough energy to try, for, try it again. When, when did you actually make the decision to go for it, and did you think, if I don't do it, I won't have enough to win? You know, I really didn't think about it. Uh, you know, I didn't think if, if I don't do it, I'm not going to win or, or any of that. You know, I just said, okay, you know, give it another shot. You know, you, you've done it in practice a couple times, and, and what the heck, you know, go for it. And now you have to sit and wait. <laughs> That's the hardest part. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Marianne, and meanwhile, there's no end to the challengers. Philippe Candeloro is next. Boy needed time to train after a disappointing European competition and a year of press interviews, TV appearances, and endorsement deals. So he shut it all out and took off for the Pyrenees. No press, no public, no adoring fans. Well, almost. I know some uh, American girl, a French girl like me, and a Japanese girl like a lot of me. But here today, I am here just for the practice because uh, I have to to make a revenge about from the European. So you know, no shaving and no brushing is it's nothing. I'm not here for to make a popularity. I am here just for the practice. Tonight, Philippe gets a chance to see if all that quiet time up on the mountain has paid off. Candeloro is fifth after the short program. Last year for his short and long program, he skated Godfather 1 and 2. This year, the sequel continues with 3 and 4. That's why the, the graying hair, the aging Godfather. I don't know if three weeks in the Pyrenees training is going to make up for a year's lost training, but he's a wild man and a wild card. He knows how to perform, and he could shake things up.
Frenchman. Far better than European. problems come from the fact that he had too much time for the cameras off the ice. performance on the ice from Philippe Candeloro of France who says if he wasn't a skater he'd be a playboy. <laughs> he is a playboy. I don't know how you go about putting together a resume for that but the only thing that interests him now is the judge's decision. We'll have his marks when we come back in a moment. We take our sight for granted in America. Candeloro awaits the judge's marks as he shoots for a medal. This should be good. He had a fantastic skate. Oh, the audience is booing. He landed seven triples. That's one more than Armanov. Three, five, five. But the French judge is at 5.9. His next mark should go up. He has by far the most interesting choreography. Again, a 5-9 from the French judge. The marks are erratic, but they do put him in second behind Eldridge. So Philippe Candeloro solidly in the hunt for a medal. And on to the ice now from the United States. In third place, beginning this phase of the competition, is Scott Davis. Davis. Scott Davis' task is simple. He wins the free skate. He wins the gold medal.
but he has a problem with nerves, particularly in the long program. It's always a battle. And he opens with his triple combination. Sandra, you said no one spins quite like Scott Davis. He's the best here. In a competition like this, when the judges are counting triples, you can't afford a double like that. Does he have enough time to do three more? There's only one minute left. He only has one more triple plan. But Todd threw an extra one in. Who knows? from where you sit, that is not going to be enough to keep Scott Davis on the podium. I'm afraid not. He had some really terrific moments, but not enough to keep him up there. Meanwhile, the run at the gold will continue when the defending champion from Canada, Elvis Stoiko, hits the ice next. As for American Todd Eldridge, all he can do is wait and see what happens.
Introducing the new no fee. Him there is American Scott Davis. He has seen the judges' marks and he knows there will be no medal for him at these world championships. And onto the ice now, the man of the moment. Everyone wants his title, but Elvis Stoiko doesn't look like he's ready to give it up. Sometimes you just want to stay out of Elvis Stoiko's way. mission quietly focused but his focus shifted in january when he suffered this crash at a practice session at canadian nationals my goals changed within one second when i hit the boards and uh wrecked my foot i went to stand up and i fell down and i and i couldn't feel my leg and i was like uh oh i had canadians in, in birmingham flash before my eyes like you know my year has ended he tried to skate his short program at that event but he couldn't finish Eldridge can only watch and wait. It's the sound of the sea. He's playing the role of Christopher Columbus.
is still alive for the goal. Eldridge knows it, the fans here in the arena know it, and you've got to think Elvis Stoiko knows it too. Wow! So proud of you. His coach, Dudley, his choreographer, Ushi Kessler, they've had a tough season with that injury. Unbelievable performance. Eight triples, two triple-triple combinations, and this one, the one that he threw in at the end of the program, triple lut, triple toe loop, incredible threw it in just like Todd threw his triple axel in. <laughs> Unbelievable night of skating. Hi everybody, <laughs> everyone at home. Hi, hi dad, I love you. Kimberly, I love you too. Thanks. Hello everybody. Present NBC. Hi Aaron, everyone at home. <laughs> Elvis knows everybody standing around him. There are the marks, look at the 6.0. Point from France. He should have a bunch of those. And will this be the confirmation Elvis is waiting for? This is it! He did it! He defended his title! Elvis Stoiko again, the world champion, Todd Eldridge, has to settle for silver. find the strength of that triple triple at the end of the program well i knew that when i did the quad uh, i was going to do the triple toe in the end i knew to need the extra one when i was doing my last fire i was just collecting my energy in my stomach and i was just packing it down and then at the end i could explode a little bit and keep the energy up after the roller coaster of emotions in the last eight weeks is it sweeter the second time around you betcha you betcha i mean i've worked so hard for it and then and to come back again with a stronger field than last year way stronger with the good guys skating well i mean uh, I feel 10 times better. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> A gutty, courageous performance from Elvis Stoiko. He repeats as the gold medalist here at the World. Todd Eldridge, the silver. Philippe Candeloro of France, the bronze. Alexei Armanov in fourth. Scott Davis finished seventh. And Elvis gets a kiss from Mom, the Canadian National Anthem, when we come back. 